right today we are going to talk about maxillary nerve right uh, first of all i will draw on the board the important anatomical landmark which will help us to explain the maxillary nerve and its branches right so let's start from here here is your orbit right uh, here is your maxilla yes here is uh, middle cranial fossa and here is your pterygo palatine fossa right this is i'm making it out of proportion larger this is trigo palatine fossa this is floor of the middle canal fossa and okay now let's start working about the maxillary nerve from where it originate what is the origin of the maxillary nerve as you know it is one of the deviant from the trigeminal ganglion right so let me draw the trigeminal ganglion here right here is your trigeminal ganglion right and yes where it is sitting this is sensory ganglion right and it is sitting in the medial part of the petrous part of temporal bone is that right in the middle canal fossa in the meckel's cave now from the trigeminal ganglion basically three deviants come out there is a ophthalmic deviant right there is ophthalmic deviant then there is maxillary deviant and then there is mandibular deviant right and of course it has a sensory root which is going to the central nervous system right and it does have a motor root right uh which goes along the mandibular nerve right this is trigeminal ganglion with sensory root this is trigeminal nerve motor root and of course behind here should be your pons here should be pons and medulla right and this is connected centrally you know where it is connected motor root to the it is connected with the motor nucleus of trigeminal and sensory root is connected with the uh, three yes what three nuclei mesencephalic nucleus central pontine nucleus and spinal nucleus of trigeminal system and as you know these sensory fibers when they enter proprioceptive fibers especially from the muscles of mastication which are coming from the mandibular nerve they are diverted to the mesencephalic nucleus fine touch fibers from the face and mucosal areas from the nose and the palate they are coming to principal pontine nucleus and pain and temperature fiber right pain and temperature fibers right which are coming from the trigeminal sensory system in the center they are connected with the spinal nucleus of trigeminal system right but today we are specifically going to focus on what is this maxillary nerve right now maxillary nerve takes origin from the trigeminal ganglion right and it moves forward in the lateral wall of cavernous sinus you know here is the cavernous sinus let me draw maxillary nerve with a little different but i am going to draw first of all here what is this cavernous sinus cavernous sinus and here it is lateral wall of cavernous sinus this is the lateral wall of cavernous sinus 
right it's the right side now what really happens that when maxillary nerve take origin from this ganglion right it enters into yes into the lateral wall of cavernous sinus right and you also need to remember above it this is the ophthalmic nerve ophthalmic division of trigeminal system it is also entering into lateral wall of cavernous sinus and of course no need to tell you this that here is which nerve going oculo motor nerve right and below it there is trochlear nerve right but today we are focusing on maxillary nerve right so we can say after taking origin from the trigeminal ganglion in the middle cranial fossa maxillary nerve which is mainly a sensory nerve for touch pain and temperature right somatic sensory nerve it enters into lateral wall of cavernous sinus and it traverses forward right and it moves forward now as it is passing through the cavernous sinus and reaches interiorly it will leave the middle cranial fossa through foramen rotundum through foramen rotundum now i will draw the foramen rotundum here and this is what yes foramen rotundum is foramen rotundum is a communication between the middle cranial fossa and pterygopalatine fossa let me make it clear what is pterygopalatine fossa pterygopalatine fossa is a pyramidal space pyramidal space bony space below the posterior end of the orbit right if you put your finger in the orbit and reach on the back and then down you will find pterygopalatine fossa or this is a pyramidal space which is behind the what is this maxilla, maxilla upper and medial most part of the maxilla or it is anterior inferior to middle cranial fossa right so what is pterygopalatine fossa pterygopalatine fossa is a pyramidal bony space on the lateral aspect deep deep lateral aspect of the skull right which is just below the apex of the orbit behind the maxilla. behind the maxilla to be more specific behind the upper and posterior posterior and medial most part of maxilla and anterior inferior to the middle cranial fossa is that right now this maxillary nerve as it is traversing through the lateral yes it emerges interiorly from the lateral wall of cavernous sinus and then through the foramen rotundum it enters into yes pterygo palatine fossa and here it has reached in the pterygo palatine fossa am i clear yes sir in upper part of pterygopalatine fossa now as it is passing interiorly through the pterygopalatine fossa right there is a monkey hand, hanging under it there is a monkey here hanging under it right
with many legs and arms. I will talk about them later. Right? This monkey is basically pterygopalatine ganglion and it is a parasympathetic ganglion. Pterygopalatine ganglion. So it means that maxillary nerve as it is traversing through the upper part of pterygopalatine fossa, it has very strong communications or branches going to the to the pterygopalatine ganglion. Is that right? First I will just make the course of the nerve. Right? Later on I will tell you about its important branches. Now, as it moves interiorly through the inferior orbital fissure. Yes, very good. Through the inferior orbital fissure, Yes, it enters into floor of orbit, right, in the floor of orbit. As soon as it leaves the pterygopalatine fossa through what? Inferior, inferior orbital fissure and enters into floor of the orbit this is the orbit and the floor of the orbit as it enters right here onward it is called infraorbital nerve what is it called infraorbital nerve so we can say that maxillary nerve as it passes through the inferior infraorbital fissure and enters into floor of orbit it continues as continues as infraorbital nerve so i'll make it a little this is infraorbital nerve which is actually a continuation of maxillary nerve is that right and when it is initially passing through the floor of the orbit it is passing through a groove and this groove when it is passing through this groove what is this this is a groove and it is passing through the groove right it is embedded in the groove right and as it traverses further this groove has a roof also for example this is the groove i'm showing you this is a groove but as it moves forward there's a roof over it what is this roof, roof over it and when there's a roof it means groove has been converted into a canal very good groove has been converted into a canal so as it moves forward right it enters into a canal in the floor of orbit and now this groove is this nerve is called infraorbital nerve this groove is called infraorbital groove infraorbital groove and this is called infraorbital canal what is it called infraorbital canal and as this infraorbital canal continues forward right okay let me draw it more clearly right this is infraorbital canal right it's all about the floor of the orbit of course don't forget you have a beautiful eye here and there is your friend what is this lacrimal gland so now it is passing through yes infraorbital canal and this infraorbital canal and interiorly opens below the inferior rim of orbit as a foramen and this foramen is called infraorbital 
foramen. What is it called? Infraorbital foramen. So this nerve will eventually emerge through infraorbital foramen as cutaneous branch of maxillary nerve. Right? Now, after this, you must remember here is your lower lid. Is that right? Here is your beautiful nose and there must be upper lip as well. Right? I think I should make a longer nose, right? You like a long nose, I know that. Right? So, this is of course your lower lid. And eventually its branches, some of them divert upward and these are called palpebral branches. Some of them are going to the nose, lateral part of the nose and these are called nasal branches and some of them are going down to the upper lip and they are called labial branches, not upper lip branches, superior labial branches, superior labial branches. So infraorbital nerve, when it comes out of the, which foramen? Yes. Then it gives palpebral branches, right? And here are nasal branches and there are superior labial branches. Am I clear? Any question up to this? Right? So this is the basic course of which nerve? Maxillary nerve and then from here onward its continuation called infraorbital nerve. Right? How many bony landmarks are or important anatomical landmark from its origin up to this point? Right? First landmark is its origin itself. What is that? Origin from? Trigeminal ganglion. Then second landmark is lateral wall of cavernous sinus. Let, then there is foramen rotundum. Then there is pterygo palatine fossa. Then there is what is this? Inf inferior inferior orbital fissure. Then there is yes infra orbital groove. And then there is infraorbital canal. And then there is infraorbital foramen. Any question? So this is origin, course and of maxillary nerve and its continuation which is infraorbital nerve and its terminal branches. Any question now? Now we come to its main branches. What are the main branches which are given by this nerve, right? Start from here. Number one, it will give a meningeal branch. What is this? Meningeal branch. And this meningeal branch is supplying middle cranial fossa meninges. What is this branch? Meningeal branch or dural branch. So this is its first branch which is coming directly from its trunk. Right? What is this branch? Meningeal branch. I will write it here. This branch number one. Right? So before it exit the middle cranial fossa through the foramen rotundum, it gives a meningeal branch which is supplying the meninges in the dura matter in the middle cranial fossa. Clear? Next step. Once it reaches pterygopalatine fossa, then there are some important branches in the pterygopalatine fossa. Now what are those branches? First of all, these branches, right? These branches, right? I will now make it a little different, not like monkey. Here is pterygopalatine ganglion, right? And what was this? Nerve, maxillary nerve, and from here it ga it gives two branches, two group of neuronal fibers which are connecting to the pterygopalatine ganglion. 
right and these two branches are called ganglionic branches what are they called ganglionic, ganglionic branches right these are ganglionic branches many fibers from axillary nerve will go to the ganglion and without relaying in the ganglion they will pass to their final destination through the branches of the ganglion you are getting it so we can say that maxillary nerve is giving sensory input sensory input to the pterygopalatine ganglion later on we'll see where they go okay i will remove these landmark i just focus now on branches first branch was dural branch second is what is this ganglionic branches right then third from here within the what is this within the pterygo palatine fossa the main trunk of maxillary nerve gives another branch superiorly which is going up and this branch is called zygomatic branch what is this called zygomatic. zygomatic branch and this zygomatic branch right enters in the orbit through inferior orbital fissure now so this was the main continuation of the nerve and it continued as infraorbital infra nerve but a very important branch is given within the pterygopalatine fossa and this branch moves upward enters into orbit through the inferior orbital fissure and this branch is called zygomatic nerve or zygomatic branch or zygomatic nerve no maxillary nerve was this this branch is called zygomatic nerve maxillary nerves gives zygomatic nerve right maxillary nerve has given here a zygomatic nerve is it right this main continuation is infra orbital i will make infra orbital like this this is your infra orbital right this is your infra orbital and this branch is what is this branch zygomatic nerve right this is zygomatic nerve i will go in detail of zygomatic nerve later it gives one more branch here right and you, i will draw the branch and you will tell me that what that branch is doing here right it gives another branch here from the maxillary nerve and this branch moves laterally and downward right it will move laterally and downward and let's suppose this is the lateral wall of i will draw the lateral wall of pterygopalatine fossa right this is the lateral wall of pterygopalatine fossa and this lateral wall is present between yes this is the lateral wall lateral you are looking from the lateral side this lateral wall is in front of the pterygoid bone this is pterygoid bone and behind the maxillary bone right and behind the maxillary bone right 
this lateral wall is this is a lateral wall actually this is not a true wall it is a gap it is a gap it's right this gap is bordered in front by the back of maxilla and behind it is bordered by the pterygoid root of the pterygoid bone now or plate that is why this area is called pterygomaxillary this is maxilla and pterygoid pterygomaxillary fissure what is it called pterygomaxillary fissure now if i draw a diagram let's suppose i make a mini diagram here here is your nose the diagram will help us later right uh, here is your orbit right here is your pterygo palatine fossa is that right now this is its lateral wall right this lateral wall is a gap right i can say this is an opening on the lateral side here is a opening in front there is pterygoid maxilla behind there is pterygoid bone so here in front there should be maxilla and behind there should be pterygoid bone so this fissure is called pterygomaxillary fissure what is this pterygomaxillary fissure this branch comes out through pterygomaxillary fissure it moves laterally come out through and it comes laterally it comes laterally right and then it runs downward it means its direction is that was upward directed this is downward and laterally directed zygomatic branch passed through inferior orbital fissure and uh, this branch i have not told the name yet this branch down going branch and laterally going branch passes through pterygomaxillary fissure then it passes on or within the what is this bone this is maxilla right the what is this and here is maxillary sinus what is here here is your maxillary sinus this is mucosa of maxillary sinus right this branch either on the surface or within the within a canal on in the maxillary bone it goes downward downward finally it is going to supply your very powerful teeth what are these these are molars how many molars molar you have no on one side upper jaw three okay so these are the molars and let me draw the molars right these are your molar teeth now what happens this branch will come down right and finally it is going to supply what are these teeth molar, molar teeth it means it is coming from the top it is superior branch coming to the jaw it is alveolar branch upper jaw it is superior alveolar and it is from the posterior aspect because there are anterior branches as well so it's posterior superior alveolar nerve what is this branch posterior superior alveolar nerve so it means listen now carefully when maxillary nerve is passing through what pterygo palatine fossa it gives ganglionic branches then it gives yes zygomatic branch and then it gives posterior superior alveolar branch which will come down and finally supply molar teeth and of course on the way it should also give branches to the mucosa of maxillary sinus any question no sir really no question then as you move forward then within the floor of 
this groove one branch is given within the floor of this groove one branch is given and another branch is given within the floor of this canal this, this was the infraorbital groove and this is infraorbital canal and one branch is here given in the infraorbital canal right now this branch will also come down and move laterally on the inner respect of lateral wall of maxilla over the surface of its yes over the surface of its mucosa of the over laterally on the surface of mucosa of maxillary sinus so in a way this nerve is which is coming down branch it has mucosa inside and it has maxillary lateral wall outside and between these two structure it is coming down it comes down molars are already supplied by the posterior nerve this middle nerve because anterior is going to be there also so this is called posterior superior alveolar this is going to be middle superior alveolar and this is going to be anterior superior alveolar clear now middle superior alveolar as it comes down it will come down and supply which teeth these are premolar right so the three mo molar and the two premolar so this is the nerve supply of premolar teeth after that there is another branch coming from the infraorbital nerve while it is traversing the infraorbital canal and this also comes down and it moves forward right and okay remember this is also supplying the mucosa and this is also on the way supplying the mucosa it means mucosa lying in the maxillary sinus is supplied by all three alveolar superior alveolar nerves anterior superior alveolar nerve this will come up from here and as it goes down now it is going to supply what is this canine incisor canine first and then incisors is that right so this is going to supply what is this and what is this and what is here incisor and all these nerves have branches which are interconnected with each other right and this network is called superior alveolar plexus all these alveolar nerves which are these posterior superior alveolar nerve middle superior, superior alveolar nerve anterior superior alveolar nerve as they go downward they are not only supplying mucosa of the maxillary sinus they also go and supply the teeth and adjacent gums right especially posterior superior alveolar supplies molar teeth middle middle superior alveolar nerve supplies premolar teeth and anterior superior alveolar this is posterior superior alveolar posterior superior alveolar middle superior alveolar anterior superior alveolar right molar supplied by this premolar supplied by that and anterior supplying the k9 and incisor any question up to this is that clear now we deal with how many branches we have talked about up to now one was the dural branch coming from the main trunk second is ganglionic branches coming from the main trunk while it is passing through pterygoid pterygopalatine fossa within the pterygopalatine fossa after giving the ganglionic branches nerve itself divided into three part 
जाइगोमेटिक नर्व गोइंग इंफ्रॉर्बिटल नर्व एंड पोस्टीरियर स्पीरियर आलवेलर नर्व इज द राइट मोस्ट ऑफ द अथॉरिटी बिलीव इंफ्रा ऑर्बिटल नर्व शुड बी कंसिडर्ड अ कॉन्टिन्यूएशन ऑफ द मिगजरी नर्व सम अथॉरिटी से दैट मिगजरी नर्व टर्मिनेट हेयर एंड डिवाइड इन टू थ्री ब्रांचेस इट्स अप टू योर टेस्ट वॉट यू वॉन्ट टू नो बट यू शुड नो एक्जैक्टली हाउ द न्यूरोनल सिस्टम इज प्लेस्ड देयर एंड वर्किंग राइट नाउ विल डील विद दिस ब्रांच जाइगोमेटिक नर्व जाइगोमेटिक नर्व गोज अलॉन्ग द लेटरल वॉल ऑफ द ऑर्बिट गोज अलॉन्ग द लेटरल वॉल ऑफ द ऑर्बिट राइट एंड एज इट इज मूविंग फॉरवर्ड इट गिव द ब्रांच विच कम्स आउट येस ऑन द अपर पार्ट ऑफ द चीक यू कैन से दिस चीकी ब्रांच राइट एंड इट कम्स आउट थ्रू विच फॉर अमेन जैगोमेटिको फेशियल देन एन अदर जैगोमेटिक नर्व डिवाइड इन टू वट जैगोमेटिको फेशियल नर्व राइट फ्रॉम द ऑर्बिट इट कम्स आउट लेटरली from the orbit it comes out laterally and supplies the cutaneous supply touch pain and temperature to which which area of the face prominence of your cheek if you kiss the cheek of a your loved one you are kissing which nerve zygomatic or facial nerve is that right but if she doesn't allow you to kiss there you can go a little up and kiss on the anterior part of the temple right and if you are kissing on the anterior part of the temple right actually that is the other branch and this is zygomatico temporal what is that zygomatico temporal temporal right both of these branches come out laterally they were originally inside the lateral wall and then why don't we come here look here is this zygomatic branch right it gives one branch here which come out what is this zygomatico facial another branch here come out what is this zygomatico temporal on this side what is this branch coming out and what is this branch coming out temporal and then from the zygomatic or temporal one special communication communicating branch is going up right here if you remember there was which branch what is this uh, ophthalmic nerve and ophthalmic nerve also passes through here and then it uh, divides into yes it divides into three branches which enter through the superior orbital fissure one is lacrimal other is frontal another is nasociliary this is a lacrimal nerve which is branch of ophthalmic nerve going to which gland lacrimal gland let's suppose we put lacrimal gland here this is lacrimal gland and this branch of zygomatico temporal nerve joins the lacrimal nerve joins which nerve lacrimal nerve and takes its fiber finally to the lacrimal gland right later on i will tell you that actually these were secreto motor fibers right which were taken up from pterygo palatine ganglion post ganglionic secreto motor fibers and these fibers went from here through these branch maxillary ganglionic branches they entered into maxillary nerve then they entered into let me let me show you from here some parasympathetic fiber which fiber parasympathetic secreto motor fiber post ganglionic right you must be knowing from where the pre ganglionic fiber come i will tell you very briefly that here is pterygoid canal what is this pterygoid canal and here is foramen lacerum right here is foramen lacerum this is pterygoid canal this is pterygoid canal and 
Actually, parasympathetic fibers are coming from superior salivary nucleus. They are coming from lower part of pond, superior sal salivary nucleus, salivary nucleus. They go along the nervous intermediates, right? Then from geniculate ganglion, right? These fibers go, these parasympathetic fibers from the geniculate ganglion of Fish. facial nerve. They go as greater petrosal nerve enter into foramen lacerum and from there this greater petrosal nerve enter into pterygoid canal. Meanwhile, here is internal carotid artery and it is bringing postganglionic sympathetic fibers. And these postganglionic sympathetic fibers go here as lesser petrosal nerve. Again, around the just a minute, around the internal carotid artery, there are postganglionic sympathetic fibers. Some of these fibers leave this plexus and they move forward, approach the greater petrosal nerve. These fibers are called deep petrosal nerve. What are these fibers called? Deep petrosal nerve. So deep petrosal nerve is bringing which fiber? Postganglionic sympathetic fibers from internal carotid sympathetic plexus. This is deep petrosal nerve. And here is, what is this nerve? This was geniculate ganglion, which was sensory ganglion. From superior salivary nucleus, preganglionic parasympathetic fibers passing through nervous intermediates of the seventh nerve reach to the geniculate ganglion from there as greater petrosal nerve they come to the middle ganglion fossa greater petrosal nerve jump into foramen lacerum and in the foramen lacerum this is which nerve greater petrosal nerve here the greater petrosal nerve unite with the deep petrosal nerve and greater petrosal nerve fibers which are preganglionic parasympathetic fibers and deep petrosal nerve fibers going along with it which are postganglionic sympathetic fibers when both of them are passing through what is this pterygoid canal both of them as together they are called they are called vidian nerve or nerve to pterygoid canal so this is the nerve to pterygoid canal is made by the greater petrosal nerve and lesser petrosal nerve and Oh, sorry, D, sorry, sorry, please. It is not lesser, it is deep, deep petrosal nerve. And both of them are moving forward as, uh, as nerve to pterygoid canal or vidial nerve. And then they will bring preganglionic fibers, parasympathetic fibers here, and postganglionic sympathetic fiber here. It means this pterygopalatine ganglion has sensory input from, sensory input from maxillary nerve right parasympathetic preganglionic fibers coming from coming from <coughs> nervous intermediates greater petrosal and nerve to dirigate canal it's sympathetic postganglionic fibers coming from the deep petrosal nerve and then nerve to dirigate canal in this way sensory fibers preganglionic parasympathetic fibers and postganglionic sympathetic fibers reach this ganglion remember this ganglion has cell bodies of postganglionic parasympathetic fibers. These postganglionic parasympathetic fibers are mainly secretomotor, mainly secretomotor for the lacrimal gland, nasal gland, paranasal mucosal glands, uh, also palatine glands, and postganglionic fibers will be also secretory to the nasopharyngeal glands. Is that right? Now we will see later how. And this sensory fiber will not relay here. And sympathetic fiber will also not stop here. They will just pass through it. But para parasympathetic fibers stop over here. Now, secretomotor parasympathetic fibers which are supposed to go to the lacrimal gland, they will jump from pterygopalatine ganglion to the ganglionic branches of maxillary. Then through the maxillary nerve, yes, through the maxillary nerve, they will pass through and jump to which nerve? Zygomatic, Zygomatic nerve. What are these fibers? Postganglionic parasympathetic fibers from which ganglion? Pterygopalatine ganglion. Right? And then they'll go, go uh, uh, along the zygomatic nerve and then zygomatico temporal nerve because zygomatic 
नर्व डिवाइडेड इंटू यस जैगोमेटिको फेशियल एंड जैगोमेटिको टेम्पोरल सो जैगो देवर अगेन पोज के लिए आने पैरासिपोथेटिक फाइबर विच आर सक्रिटो मोटर फाइबर फॉर द लैक्रीमल ग्लैंड दे विल लीव फ्रॉम हेयर एंटर थ्रू दिस गेंगलियनिक ब्रांचेज इन टू मिगजलिना देन इट्स जैगोमेटिक ब्रांच देन इट टू इन टू जैगोमेटिक और टेम्पोरल ब्रांच एंड देन फ्रॉम हेयर दे गो एज अ कम्युनिकेशन दे गो एज अ कम्युनिकेटिंग ब्रांच टू द लैक्रीमल नर्व एंड विद द लैक्रीमल नर्व दिस सक्रिटो मोटर फाइबर इज रीच टू Acrimal gland, is that right? And actually, along with these fibers, secretory motor fibers, there are also what are these? With sympathetic fibers, also going to this gland. Any question here? There's no. Now we are very clear about the dural branch, <coughs> right? We are also clear about what is this zygomatic branch? We divide into zygomatico. facial and temporal and a communicating branch to the lacrimal nerve for secreto motor supply to the lacrimal gland clear we are also clear about posterior superior alveolar nerve middle superior alveolar nerve anterior superior alveolar nerve now we are left with these branches these branches what are these branches yes palpebral branches what are these palpebral branches inferior palpebral branches which is going to supply the lower eyelid and also conjunctiva related with it then there is what are these branches nasal yes nasal branches right they will go and supply the lateral part of the nose mainly right and above it this is supplied by external nasal you remember nerve which was the terminal branch of anterior thymoidal nerve which was itself a branch of nasal ciliary nerve which was itself a branch of ophthalmic nerve <coughs> and these are what are these superior labial branches and they are going to supply the upper lip any question up to this no now these branches dural branch what is this dural branch ganglionic branches zygomatic branch posterior superior alveolar branch right the and infraorbital branch this is infra orbital. orbital branch these five branches are called direct branches of maxillary nerve so someone asked you what are the direct branches of maxillary nerve and what are indirect branches of maxillary nerve let me tell you what is the difference indirect branches are which are from the maxillary nerve sensory fiber going to ganglion and through the ganglion they go to different tissues yeah. that i will explain later yes. those branches of those fibers of maxillary nerve <coughs> which through the ganglionic branch come to pterygopalatine ganglion and through the branches of pterygopalatine ganglion they go to their final destination those branches are called indirect branches of maxillary nerve right but those branches which do not pass they are coming from the main trunk they are called direct, direct, direct branches now direct branches number 1 direct branches meningeal branch number 2 direct branches are ganglionic, ganglionic branches number 3 is zygomatic number 4 is posterior superior alveolar <coughs> number 5th fifth direct branch or which can be considered as continuation of maxillary nerve is infraorbital branch and then these are the branches of infraorbital infraorbital is giving a branch in the floor of infraorbital canal what is this sorry through the infraorbital groove what is this middle superior alveolar another giving branch through the floor of infraorbital canal what is this branch yes anterior superior alveolar and then infraorbital nerve has terminal branches which are palpebral nasal and superior labial nasal and superior labial 
okay just a little review and we'll start from here and see how much you have learned okay this is ganglion what is this ganglion. this ganglion what is this branch the other three of thalamic and mandibular this maxillary as it is going forward it gives a branch here dural then when it passes to the there, this is giving two branches to what are these ganglionic then itself it divided into three branches what is this zygomatic what is this posterior sphere alveolar and what is this inframental it is giving one branch here middle and giving one more branch here anterior superior alveolar and then giving three final branches palpebral nasal superior alveolar and this was zygomatic branch giving zygomatico facial zygomatico temporal and one communicating branch to any question these are the direct branches and then there are further branches yes please so the first branch is dural branch and meningeal branch we can call it uh, meningeal branch we can also call it dural branch because the dural matter is pain sensitive arachnoid and pia is not am i clear yes. right any more question okay so now if my arm is the nerve maxillary nerve i'm going to talk about direct branches coming from here yes dural ganglionic zygomatic anterior superior palpebral is that right yes done let's have a break and then we'll continue with its indirect branches the fibers of maxillary nerve being distributed through the branches of trigopalatine ganglia right so we were talking about the branches of maxillary nerve and i told you there are direct branches of maxillary nerve and there are indirect. indirect branches which are going through the ganglion the fibers of the maxillary nerve passing through the ganglion and then go along the trigopalatine ganglion branches to their final destinations direct branches were yes dural branch number 1 ganglionic branches number 2 zygomatic branch number 3 posterior superior alveolar number 4 and inframental nerve fifth branch direct branch right then zygomatico temporal zygomatico facial and sorry zygomatico facial zygomatico temporal and communication to this these three are branches of zygomatic nerve right then anterior uh, middle superior alveolar nerve anterior superior alveolar nerve and palpebral branches nasal branches and superior labial branches these are the branches of infraorbital nerve clear now when fibers come over here right these sensory fibers i will show you a typical branch of this ganglion right the branches from the ganglion let's suppose i talk about the palatine branch right this will take postganglionic parasympathetic fibers right with that it will take some yes sensory fibers touch pain and temperature from the maxillary plus they will take some sympathetic fiber this is a typical ganglionic branch so it means now onward whatever ganglionic branches i tell you they are having what kind of fibers they are having yes somatic fibers touch pain temperature yes, they are having post ganglionic parasympathetic secretomotor fibers yes, and they are having sympathetic post ganglionic fibers which are vasomotor fibers is that right so this is a typical ganglionic branch right now this ganglion has trigopalatine ganglion has how many named branches what are the most important branches for this purpose i will draw a diagram here let's suppose this is orbit right here is your nose right and of course there will be orbit on this side as well here are your beautiful eyes right okay this is very bad i should draw some 
more better eye. You remember upper eyelid covers at least half of it. Yes. It should cover, right? Anyway, this is your orbit. What is this? Okay. Now here is I'm making it out of proportion larger. What is this? Fossa. Right? It is out of proportion. I made it larger, it's smaller. Right? Here is your ganglion. Here is your ganglion. Ganglion has sensory fiber coming from maxillary nerve, parasympathetic secretomotor fiber, preganglionic coming from greater petrosal nerve and nerve to tirigate canal, and sympathetic fiber coming from deep petrosal nerve and nerve to tirigate canal. Clear? Now, this is the input. Sensory input, parasympathetic input and sympathetic input. Now, what are the output of these ganglia? We are going to talk about number one. Through, what is this? Inferior orbital fissure. Some branches from the ganglion go upward. These are called orbital branches. These are called orbital, orbital branches. It means from the ganglion, some branches go directly to the orbit. This is orbital branch. What is it? Orbital branch. Orbital branch. This orbital branch as a typical branch. Now, what it will be doing? This orbital branch. This will be supplying the orbital periosteum. Right? It will be also supplying the sphenoidal sinus mucosa. It will be also supplying the posterior ethmoidal sinuses mucosa. Is that right? So this is upward going is? Yes. Now you will tell me. What is this? Orbital branch. Is that right? Yes. Now, medially, here is which foramen? Which is communicating pterygopalatine fossa medially communicating with the nasal cavity. What is this? Foramen. Saphino palatine foramen. Have you heard of yes, yes. Saphino palatine foramen? Is that right? From here, the branches will go to the Saphino palatine foramen, right? And they will enter into nose. So they should be called which branches? Nasal branches. So here are the nasal branches going to the nose. nose. Now these nasal branches. They are in upper part of the nose, so we call them superior nasal branches. And they are on the posterior part of the nose, so posterior superior nasal branches. From this ganglion, what are these going? Posterior superior nasal branches. Is that right? Now, they will divide into medial group, a lateral group, and they will divide into medial group. Lateral will go to the lateral wall with concha and meatus. Yes. Medial will go to the septum. Is that right? So what are these branches? Posterior, posterior superior, superior nasal. nasal branches. We divide into posterior, superior, medial nasal, medial nasal and posterior, superior, lateral, lateral nasal. Clear? Yes, <coughs> now, they will supply the nasal mucosa with touch pain and temperature fiber from the maxillary nerve, also vasomotor fibers and also secretomotor fiber to the nasal glands. Like a typical branch. Yes. Am I clear? One of these nasal branches, one of these medial nasal branches goes down the septum anteriorly and through the incisive fora canal they come to the palate. One of these what are, uh, what are these branches? First of all, these are lateral yes. and here there are medial. medial. Out of medial they supply the septum but one of the medial branch goes along the septum downward and forward and just floor of the nose is made by the palate. Yes, sir. Yes. Through the canal in a palate which communicates the nasal cavity with the oral cavity, incisive canal. This branch gives, come over here, uh, let me make, let's suppose this is your sept, 
पैलेट ओके एंड हियर इज योर नेजल सेप्टम आई एम सीन फ्रॉम द राइट साइड हियर इज योर नोज इज दैट राइट इफ दिस इज योर नोज राइट हेयर शुड बी विच टीथ मोलर प्री मोलर एंड हेयर शुड बी केनाइन एंड इनसाइसिव राइट ओके नाउ वट हैपन दिस ब्रांच मूव फॉरवर्ड गो डाउन फ्रॉम हेयर थ्रू अ टनल इट विल अपियर वेयर इन द पैलेट थ्रू अ टनल इन दिस पार्ट ऑफ द पैलेट एंड सप्लाई हेयर because it's this nerve is supplying the nose and palate both this is called nasopalatine branch nasopalatine nerve am i have you heard of it yes, yes. nasopalatine so this is the nasopalatine nerve which actually originated from pterygopalatine yes. ganglion and as nasal one of the nasal branch it entered it through the sphenopalatine foramen to the nasal cavity yes sir is that right yes sir okay this will supply the gums you can say more interior most part of the palate and also supply the gums is that right yes, uh, behind the which teeth canine, canine. okay yes, no incisors yes, behind the incisors right yes. clear yes, yes so these were your now from here another group of branches which come down right this was through a canal these fibers are coming down these are called palatine nerves what are these because they are going to the palate these are called palatine, palatine nerve they are greater palatine nerves and also with them there is lesser palatine nerve right so if this was the ganglion this was nasopalatine which pass through sphenopalatine foramen and here is greater palatine nerve canal through which greater palatine nerves came down and they will move interiorly on a groove palate. just inferior aspect of the palate and communicate with the Neither. some nasopalatine this is greater palatine nerve right in this diagram how i will show greater palatine it will come from here it will go down from here it will move forward right yes. and through the nose nasal palatine will come yes yes sir. is that right yes sir. now greater palatine nerve this greater palatine nerve or this greater palatine nerve right this will give supply the hard palate for touch pain and temperature coming from which fibers maxillary nerve and also supplying the vasomotor fiber sympathetic and secreto motor fiber for its serous and mucous glands in the palate yes sir. is it clear then through the same ganglion remember fibers which are going up what were they orbital orbital which were going through the nose what were they nasal nasal okay let's work with this diagram fibers going up or orbital, orbital. orbital. Yeah. right yes. fibers which were going uh, what is this no nasal branches nasal branch. posterior superior nasal, nasal right which have lateral and medial one of the medial is nasopalatine yes. clear then downward going are greater palatine and this greater palatine as they are going down they give multiple branches to the nose also right yes. greater palatine is going from here downward is that right but on the way they also give to the nose nasal branches these nasal branches right these nasal branches which are coming from the greater palatine these are also posterior but inferior because these are posterior and superior these are posterior and inferior so posterior superior nasal branches coming from the ganglion yes sir. posterior inferior nasal branches are branches of palate greater palatine is that right and all these nasal branches either these nasal branches are posterior superior nasal branches right lateral group or posterior superior nasal branches medial, medial group or special branch nasopalatine or these are the branches which are posterior inferior nasal branches all these nasal branches participate in the sneezing reflex which reflex sneezing, sneezing. sneezing. 
reflex that when nasal mucosa is irritated one of the nerve ending from these branches might be irritated and it will connect through the maxillary nerve to the central nervous system and initiate the sneezing reflex where sensory pathway or afferent pathway is through the maxillary nerve and its nas nasal branches yes, maxillary nerve ganglionic branches and nasal branches and efferent pathways through the vagus nerve tenth cranial nerve right for sneezing reflex but let's come back so what is this tell me orbital branches here it is posterior superior nasal branches greater palatine then actually greater palatine nerves and lesser palatine nerve both of them go through the same canal which is called greater palatine canal but down greater palatine canal opens in two foramen one foramen is interior and other foramen is posterior you understand yes. i mean if greater palatine canal is coming like this there is a big foramen in front and a little foramen going opening backward actually greater palatine nerve exit from here and lesser palatine nerve exit from posterior aspect of the palate is that right yes, sir. and this is lesser palatine nerve yes, sir. now greater palatine descend downward through the greater palatine nerve exit from greater palatine foramen and moves interiorly but lesser palatine nerve right also descends through greater palatine canal but exit through lesser palatine foramen and moves posteriorly right so if i draw the palate let's suppose that here is the palate right here is the nasal cavity and here is the soft palate okay okay just here should be tonsils and here is your tongue you understand this section like that here is the tongue yes sir yes sir right yes, sir. and here is a hard palate and here is nasal cavity so nasal cavity hard palate and these are the now what happens from here this was your fossa fibers which were going here orbital lateral nasal posterior superior medial nasal one of them is nasal palatine from here greater palat palatine which are going interiorly and then lesser palatine which are going posteriorly supplying the soft palate and tonsil supplying the soft palate and tonsil if you see from the side if you see from the side this is soft palate right greater palatine nerves will come down and move interiorly lesser palatine will come down and move posteriorly and lesser palatine will supply what is this tonsil and lesser palatine will also supply soft palate clear then if we go, go with this diagram same right here was your orbit this was your which branch orbital branch this was nasal branches these are palatine greater and lesser branches from here a branch goes backward nasopharyngeal branch because it is going to the pharynx this is pharynx here is your larynx right and here it is your pharynx this is nasopharynx oropharynx laryngopharynx is that right so this branch which is going backward it passes through a palato vaginal canal strange isn't it palato vaginal canal but this 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 should be called actually nasopharyngeal branch so you don't uh, make wrong connections this is this also brings fibers to the nasopharynx and eustachian tube interior part of auditory tube or eustachian tube now come here tell me rapidly orbital branch nasal branches palatine branches and from here it is going what is this palato vagina is that right any question here now few important thing 
here it was touch point temperature sympathetic and parasympathetic going to lacrimal gland sympathetic and parasympathetic secretomotor now if we look at this diagram these are going to the sphenopalatine foramen so what are these branches nasal these are going to palatine canal greater palatine canal so greater palatine and lesser palatine here it is palato vaginal canal so what should be this branch nasopharyngeal branch is that right the point which you need to remember all of these branches are having maxillary nerve fibers touch pain and temperature so maxillary nerve is giving sensation to the nose giving sensation to the hard palate soft palate and tonsil and nasopharynx and also giving sensation to all mucosa around this area i mean nasal mucosa and paranasal sinuses mucosa palatine muco greater pa uh, what is this greater palate mucosa soft palate mucosa hard palate mucosa and nasopharynx bringing to all these area touch point temperature fibers sympathetic fibers and secretomotor parasympathetic fibers is that clear yes. all these branches are called indirect ganglionic branches of maxillary nerve as well is that right either you call them just branches of trigopalatine ganglion but because they have maxillary nerve fibers they can be considered indirect branches of maxillary nerve through the ganglion passing to without relaying in the ganglion passing to their destination through ganglionic branches any question no, no, there's no question last but very important thing actually some taste fiber from the tractus solitarius nucleus taste fibers are connected through the nervous intermediates through the geniculate ganglion through greater protrusal nerve to nerve to pterygoid canal these taste fiber reach to this ganglion trigopalatine ganglia and exclusively they go through lesser palatine nerve and supply the soft palate and tonsillar area is that right so it means all the branches of the ganglion are having sensory fibers sympathetic and parasympathetic but lesser palatine has additional fibers of taste now before you leave i will just draw a structure here and you will tell me what are these branches and if you tell me right class is off which ganglion trigeminal Tri 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 ganglion yes what is this branch dural, dural or meningeal branch it comes into fossa in the fossa what are these two branches coming down ganglionic branches what is this branch zygomatic infraorbital posterior superior alveolar is that right any question up to here here is your beautiful ganglion right then from here zygomatic or facial zygomatic or temporal and communicating branch to the lacrimal nerve this is giving yes what is it this was infraorbital middle superior middle superior alveolar anterior superior alveolar palpebral nasal labial clear now come over here here is your beautiful ganglion giving fiber upward orbital branches to the nose nasal going down and then anteriorly greater palatine going down and backward lesser palatine going again down nasopharyngeal and here sympathetic fibers were coming and parasympathetic preganglionic were coming what was this nerve nerve to pterygoid canal right which was originally coming from greater petrosal right and eventually connected with superior salivary nucleus and what was this nerve coming deep petrosal coming plexus around internal carotid post ganglionic fibers from superior cell superior cervical nucleus and pre ganglionic fibers coming from the sympathetic pre ganglionic fiber coming from spinal cord cervical spinal cord t1 level these are pre ganglionic sympathetic post ganglionic sympathetic deep petrosal nerve nerve to pterygoid canal and then every branch of this ganglion how many branches are there one orbital 
सेकेंड नेजल ग्रुप थर्ड इज ग्रेटर पैलेटाइन फोर्थ इज लेसर पैलेटाइन फिफ्थ इज नेजो फ्रेंचल ब्रांच इज देर एनी मिसिंग वन टू थ्री फोर एंड फाइव इज अ राइट एवरी ब्रांच एज सिंपथेटिक पैरासिंपथेटिक एंड सेंसरी फाइबर ओनली लेसर पैलेटाइन हैज टेस्ट फाइबर एज वेल एनी क्वेश्चन ओके क्लास डिस्प्रेस थैंक यू